today? Doing good? Good good? Awesome, awesome. Well, I am Pastor Nick, and this is my wife, Pastor Angela. I'm going to introduce her myself. Uh, and I'm so, we're so glad you guys are here uh, for part two of Power Surge. Are y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready to hear this word, part two? Part two. I don't part know. Two. It's about, about six and a half in here. I don't know. I, I didn't need to ask it, it again. It did sound like a little struggle. Just a little bit. Y'all ready for part two? All right, there we go. Amen. Part two, part two. So, listen, last week, who was here last week for part one? If you weren't in the building, but did you watch online? Listen, online, did you get part one? Pastor Katria laid it down, okay? We learned about the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. Some amazing things took place uh, last week. We had several people who accepted the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, come on, huh? Come on, come on. Huh? They put another little tool, be- tool in the uh, tool belt. They have a little arsenal. They ready? Okay. The power of prayer and the Spirit. And then also many others received a f- refreshing of his power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And like Pastor Angela said, it's a powerful, powerful week. Uh, last Sunday uh, during service as we all felt the power surge of the Holy Spirit. And so if you haven't, again, had a chance to go back, watch part one on YouTube, or what's the other way we can watch? On the app. Come on, on. hashtag on the app. Go ahead and check that out. But like I said, we're going to, we we get the honor to tag team preach. Hello. We get to tap in and do it together. And so we're still focusing on the Holy Spirit this week. And we want to get into the word in our main scripture. But one thing I love about the Holy Spirit is that he will show you the things that help you see and understand the Word of God, Amen. And and I, I, so today we're not only talking about the Holy Spirit, but we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, okay? And I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, "Show me, show us how to see this thing differently, right? Because we 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 don't want to just go down the list of the fruit and explain, like, okay, right? We we've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, right?" So we, we wanted to do it a little different. So I was like, through the week, Holy Spirit, show me something. And sure enough, he showed me a movie. Showed me a movie. And it's gonna, y'all not going to even guess what movie it was, but it's a very underrated movie. Very underrated movie. Um, very underrated. Okay? Spider-Man 3. See? 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 Y'all love See, you heard that? Oh. One, so you thought I was going to say, clap in the back was like, I was gonna yes, say Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3. Far From Home or something. Yeah. No, it was Spider-Man 3. Got even got a picture of, do y'all, do y'all even know that Peter Parker? Don't nobody even remember that Peter Parker, right? Don't nobody, that was the nice, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, right? But when you get into part three, it starts off, he's like the happiest guy in the world, right? He's happy, he's smiling. Boy, got the joy, of the, got the joy of the Lord on him, or something. <laughs> Everybody loves him. He's getting the key to the city, and then at some point, it starts to get too much for him. He starts to he starts to feel himself a little bit, and start making some mistakes. And then at some point, he, he gets tainted. That we know it as venom, but that that black spirit comes over him, and if you remember. You know, he, he just saved the city, right? Everybody loved him. But now his flesh starts to take over. And if you remember the scene when he first put on the black suit, he started look. whoa, hold on. This feels good. And if you saw the other picture, his hair was different. We're not going to talk about the dance scene. We're not going to talk about that. That was terrible. We're not going to talk about that. We are not going to talk. No, we're not. I see people in the crowd. No, we're not doing that. But if you notice, he was different. He went from this helpful God to being vengeful. He went from this friendly neighborhood Spider-Man to being overtaken by this, this substance that made him ultimately angry, even in fight scenes afterwards. He's the aggressor now. He's starting the fights. And at one point, he, he hurts somebody really close to him. And they look at him and ask him, who are you? And he says, I don't know. And as we look at, again, have that picture in your mind, we see two completely different people. That, and that's pretty much where we're headed today. Two completely different people. And so I want you to turn to Galatians 5, and we're going to start in verse 16 and work our way to verse uh, 25. So Galatians 5, 16 through 25. 
already. See, we, we, we're about to go. Verse 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary uh, to one another. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary. So that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of these, works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavatiousness, idolatry, witchcraft, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, idolatry, envies, murders, drunkenness, revealings, and such like, of which I tell you before, and I was also told you in the past, they, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperament, and against those, or, excuse me, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and against these are no such law, and that they are Christ, and that they are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And so we want to teach from the subject, Tainted Fruit. Tainted Fruit, Tainted Fruit. So this week I read something that said uh, one thing, only one thing is worse than producing no fruit, and that's producing bad fruit. So what I want to ask is what is tainted fruit or bad fruit, okay? So, you know, I like definitions. We, we are definition church, okay? So the word taint, um, the dictionary describes it as to affect with bad or undesirable quality, contaminate or pollute something. And then we read, according to Galatians 5, 19 through 21, um, that tainted fruit is actually evidence of the work of the flesh, okay? It's something that goes against, it's opposite of the Holy Spirit. And it's really important, I want to hold on for a second, it's really important for us to focus on that just for a bit. Um, we know the fruit of the Spirit, right? That's one of the first Bible scriptures we learned after uh, John three sixteen. Okay, the fruit of the Spirit. There's a song about it. Children's church, Sunday school, we learned about it. And that's good because this is a goal that we need to reach, right? We want to see what we should be producing, right? It sets the standard. But if we ignore the previous scripture that describes the works of the flesh, how will we know if we're operating in the works of the flesh? We'll be walking around thinking that we're producing fruit of the Spirit, but indeed it is not. So we have to pay attention to that. So tainted fruit, again, is the opposite of uh, the fruit of the Spirit. And tainted fruit is the evidence of a life that's being lived that goes against God. Okay? It goes against God. So tainted fruit, as with good fruit, is the evidence of the tree source. So what do I mean by that? A lemon tree only produces lemons. An apple tree only produces apples. A peach tree only produces peaches. Okay? You're not going to find a peach growing from an apple tree. It's just not going to happen. Why is that? Because a tree only fr produces fruit of its kind. So Matthew 12, 33, it says, Either make a tree good and his fruit good, or else make a tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Which brings me to our first point, tainted fruit affects you. Y'all say that, tainted fruit affects you. So if we're living according to the word of God and being led of the Holy Spirit, our fruit, the, the evidence would reflect that, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, right? I might have said it a little differently, but uh, you got it. That's healthy, good fruit, right? But if we're living a life that goes against God and according to the works of the flesh, then we're going to produce that tainted fruit. We read it earlier, idolatry, hatred, right? Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, murders, drunkenness, 
All that, that's tainted fruit. So again, so again, tainted fruit is evidence of a life that's going against God. And while we're claiming out loud to be Christ followers, when we're operating in the flesh and producing tainted fruit, we're actually not being very good witnesses for God. We're not being true witnesses for God, okay? So this is how sinners can look at Christians who are fake producing good fruit in church, but displaying tainted fruit on their jobs, in their schools, and everywhere else they go, right? So then what happens? The sinner looks at them and is like, well, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. So if that's what saved is, if this is what being a Christian is, then I don't want it. Okay? So tainted fruit, it spoils your witness. And so I want, before we move on to point two, I want to tell you three ways that our fruit becomes tainted. The first way is exposure. Y'all say exposure. exposure. So our fruit can become tainted by allowing our spirit man to be exposed to things that break him down instead of building him up. You all have to please, please, please keep this in mind that we are first spirit in a shell of a body. Okay, this is why when we pass away and go to heaven, our bodies are not going, right? It's our spirit man. So we have to keep in mind that we have to build this man up, okay? And part of that is watching our eye gates and our ear gates. What are we allowing inside of us? What are we allowing? What influence are we allowing that produces either fruit of the spirit or works of the flesh? And again, you guys have heard us say it time and time again up here that it doesn't even have to be anything bad, but is it good for you? Is it good for you? So Luke 11:34 says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But when it is bad, your body is full of darkness. Okay, the word is telling you right there. What you allow inside can create light or darkness. The second way is experience. So we all hear, um, I see familiar faces here, most of us here. Um, you're a believer. You love the Lord. You have a relationship with God, but something has happened, right? You find yourself lashing out. You find yourself getting jealous and envious. You find yourself having attitudes and things like that. You're giving into the flesh. What happened? Your fruit became, come on. Y'all going to help preach this today. Your fruit became tainted, okay? So how does this happen? There's a door that becomes open, and it leaves room enough for the enemy to come in and cause that fruit to be tainted. So maybe somebody said something to you that you didn't like, and so you became offended. Uh -oh. Maybe then it's hard to forgive someone, so now bitterness takes root. So when you were once this nice person, sweet, compassionate person, now you're mean. You have a short on patience. The Lord, look, I'm going to be transparent. The Lord is working on me with the patience. Jesus, is he, is he working on y'all with some patience? You might become short on patience, and then you may even become hard-hearted after that. Now can nobody get close to you because you're too busy like, no, nah, we can't let nobody else get in close. Nobody's going to hurt me like that again. And so these experiences and things that we go through, childhood trauma or uh, broken relationships, these types of things, failures, shortcomings, they're legitimate and we deal with those things, but we can't allow them to take root in our lives in such a way that produces tainted fruit. Because see, whatever we produce, if it's tainted, we ourselves can't even eat off of that. How are we going to even encourage ourselves? We try to over here encourage somebody else. We produce some tainted fruit. All we doing is spread some tainted fruit. The third way is sin. Sin. Now, tainted fruit, if you remember in Galatians, what we read earlier is that it's the works of the flesh. It is sin itself. Tainted fruit is sin itself. So sin breeds more sin. You're not going to put two sins together and come up with something holy. So sin itself is going to breed more sin. And the Bible tells us that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? So no one is perfect. But when we choose to make sin our dwelling place, when we choose to make sin our home, that's our address, that's what we go to, that's what just pops out of our mouth when we want to fly off the handle, that's just how we act and how we behave. Wait a minute. We are giving into the flesh and then our lives are being reflected as, what, as the works of the flesh instead of being led by the fruit of the Spirit. 
We cannot give in to the spirit or the flesh and gratify our flesh. We need to be led of the Holy Spirit. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, tainted fruit affects you. So we, we want to take it another layer to that, right? And so part two, I want you to, to write this down. Tainted fruit affects your relationship with others. Because see, we spend a lot of time talking about you and how your tainted fruit affects you. But let's, let's dive into relationships, right? And I want to give you an illustration. I want you to think about your favorite piece of fruit, whatever that is, apple, oranges, kiwi. There you go. I know, amen, grapes, whatever you got. Pineapple, okay. We can, we can go down the list, right? And, and I want you to think about that. And, and one thing we know about fruit, it has to be ripe before you eat it, amen? So imagine that same piece of fruit is ripe, and it's ready to be bitten into. And you take that bite. I t- hey, come on. Yeah. Feel good, don't it? And then you offer that fruit to somebody else. It's good, ain't it? But what if you give them tainted fruit? What if you give them rotten fruit? And you, but it looks good. It looks good. It's dressed up nice. It's dressed up nice. I'm saying there's something in there. And you hand it over like here. Here's this apple. I want to give you this fruit. And then when they bite into it, they're looking at you like you're crazy. Like, why did you give me this rotten fruit? But this is something we do every day. Think about that. You had the same anticipation that that fruit looked amazing and, be re- and ready, was ready to be eaten. But this time, again, it's rotten. And that's what it looks like when we, when we have and deal with tainted fruit. See, Pastor Angela talked about present, you know, presenting what we present to others, right, and how it looks. And ultimately, their experience will align with the fruit we're eating. So if their experience with us as Christians, all they see is surface fresh, surface good, but then when they get to know us, when they get to experience us, they're questioning the entire scripture of Galatians. Like, wait a minute, they, they follow Christ. Why are they mean? They follow Christ. Why are they fill in the blank? And, and let's bring it home for you. Not just people you don't know. What about how does it affect people you do know? How does it affect your kids, your spouse, your coworkers, your church family? Think about this. Do, does your fruit look appetizing to others? Or are you even presenting characteristics worthy to be called fruit? See, if you go back to verse 14, it says, The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Constantly fighting each other. If somebody tell you they're not dealing with nothing, don't believe it. Because it's constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Here's the thing. When we don't address this battle in prayer and constant connection with the Holy Spirit, what should have been dealt in private with him gets played out in public with everybody else. So when you should have dealt with your anger at home with the Holy Spirit, you come to work, school, church, and you're angry. And then you're wondering why everybody else is the way they are. When the question should have been, why didn't you deal with you? Because who can change, who can deal with who? I can't deal with what Johnny over here do. But I can deal with what Nick deals with. Amen. I can go to my private space and deal with that. And I want you to think about those desires listed in the main scripture. Because see, it's one thing for us to deal with it. It's another thing to have those things play out in other people. Right. So we're sitting there dealing with things ourselves. Right. But because we didn't take the time to invest in that connection, we're going to get into that even more a little later. But we did not take the time. It ain't Johnny's fault. Johnny got Johnny got to deal with his own connection. But we also have to deal with our own. And, And, you know, it's funny when I was thinking about this, we we end up putting barriers for people to experience God. So let's bring it home even more. Let's talk about church. And and if you've done any study, you know, like, 
there are reasons people don't come to church. Amen? Reason, there's a lot of reasons why, right? But one reason that I just don't understand, and it frustrates me if I'm honest, is that they didn't feel welcome. I don't understand how do you walk in a house of worship, a house of God, and you walk out and you didn't feel welcome. Think about that. And then ask yourself this question. Who's responsible for that? We are. We're responsible for that. Because the fruit of the Spirit is what changes that. Just think, as people come to church, what if Christians, and all that means, is like Christ? didn't say you were Christ. It just said you're like Christ. What if we showed more love and kindness and less jealousy and envy? Because, see, tainted fruit affects people, but Holy Spirit-produced fruit has effects when we use it. Amen? And I want you to think about the power that lies in the Christian who constantly connects with the Spirit. Not just the Christian, but the one who constantly connects with the fruit of the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, and then you now turn that connection into a, what you exhibit out of your daily walk. And I want you to think about that. Those who walk in the Spirit are united with Him and are recipients of the, of the fruit the Spirit produces. See, those who walk in the Spirit of love can love. And there's no limit to that love. Think about any relationship you're in. Do you say, oh, okay, I love you enough? You keep loving because, again, you're connected to the Spirit. You walk in the Spirit, you experience joy. And you're able to constantly exhibit and experience joy. You get to walk in peace and be worry-free and deny anxiety. Deny it. Because, again, who are you connected to? You get to walk in the, walk in the spirit, you get to walk in kindness to show tender concern of the needs of others. You get to walk in goodness and those actions reflect virtue and holiness. Ooh, you get to walk in the spirit of self-control. Where you display moderation and constraint. And you build the ability to say no to your flesh. Now again, I didn't say it was easy to do. Because it's not easy to do. But again, that's why the constant connection has to be prevalent in our lives. Because when we rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us in thought, word, and deed, our entire way of life gets changed. Amen? We're able to see things and live according to the rule of the gospel and allow the Spirit to move us toward obedience. Because see, when we walk in the Spirit, we find that the sinful appetites of the flesh have no more dominion over us. So if you're wondering why you're constantly struggling with something, I'd have to question, where's your connection? Are you connected to anxiety or are you connected to the Spirit? Because whatever you're connected to will stay constant. And again, tying this back to how it affects others, imagine if all of those things that we just talked about, we exhibited on a daily basis, and people were able to connect to us in those ways instead of in anxiety. You ever been around somebody who's anxious? At some point, you start to feel like, what's going, what's, what's going on? Like, wait a minute. But if you're around somebody who's kind, what happens? Think about that. As we literally exhibit the fruit of the Spirit in our lives and in, in, in other people's lives as well. Amen. That was good. That was good. I'm taking, I'm taking notes as he's talking. So we've talked about how tainted fruit affects you. We talked about how tainted fruit affects you with others. And now we're going to talk about our third point, how tainted fruit affects your relationship with God, because it does. Okay, let me ask you guys a question real quick. Poll the room. What is one of the most important components in any relationship? Talk to me. Huh? Communication. Somebody said that. Listen, if I had something to give you, congratulations. Communication. Listen. 
Communication is one of the most important components in any relationship, right? Um, you communicate all the time with whomever you are interacting with or in relationship with, right? So you communicate to teach. You communicate, you communicate to correct, yeah? You communicate to say, I love you. You could... You, commun oh. you communicate, you know, to, to share your frustration. You, com you use words. You communicate. We also communicate non-verbally, right? So we can give a touch of, like, you know, comfort. You can give a hug if you want to share that you're caring for someone or loving someone, right? You can roll your eyes if you got an attitude. The Lord's working on me. You can worry your eyes if you got an attitude or if you're frustrated. You can frown and grimace if you're in pain. You smile when you're, when you're excited or laugh when you're, you know, something's funny. You can express all of those things. We communicate. So what does this have to do with tainted fruit? I'm glad y'all asked. Because tainted fruit, what happens with tainted fruit is that it desensitizes us to be able to... Dis properly discern the voice of the Holy Spirit who is always speaking to us. He communicates with us, okay? He communicates with us. And I'm going to tell you just for a moment, he is talking to you. It's just that you're giving credit to, like, your gut. You're giving credit to, you know, something popped in, something told me, something popped into my head, right? You're, you're giving, um, you're giving, that acknowledgement to, I just got, it's just an intuition. I just thought about it. Nah, fam, that was the Holy Spirit. And you have been successful at grieving him now. His feelings are hurt when we don't acknowledge him, when we don't acknowledge his voice, or when, better yet, when we are ignoring him. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is always speaking to us. Um, but when we're operating in our flesh, right, the works of the flesh, it makes it really hard to hear his gentle voice that's speaking to you when you got the loud voice of sin that's blaring, huh? I don't know about y'all. Sin is loud. It's loud in your ear. That's why it's so hard to fight off sinful desires and curiosity. It's super hard, right? But we have to be so connected to the Holy Spirit that we're able to discern and hear his gentle voice. So uh, John 10, 4 and 5, and I'll paraphrase it. It says, my sheep know my voice, and the voice of a stranger they won't follow. What do they do instead? They flee from it, right? Now, the only way that a sheep is going to follow the voice of a stranger is if the voice is no longer strange. So that's a question for all of us, not just y'all, but us too, is what voice are we hearing? What stranger voice is no longer strange that is pulling us away from hearing the gentle voice of the Holy Spirit who is leading us every single day. So not only does uh, tainted fruit affect our ability to discern and hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, but affects our relationship with God because it creates distance, uh, it creates distance between ourselves and God. But I know, wait, doesn't Romans 8, it says like, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels or principalities or powers nor present things or things to come uh, nor height or death or any other created thing. It won't separate me from the love of God. I'm glad y'all know y'all word. You are right. Nothing can separate you from the love of God because his love is unconditional and everlasting. But wait, it's the works of the flesh. It's that tainted fruit. It's the guilt, the shame, and condemnation that causes us to pull away from God. Because maybe we feel like we've just sinned a little bit too much. We've ignored the Holy Spirit a little bit too much that now I don't even deserve to call out to God. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. And that's the lie, uh, that the enemy, that's the lie of the enemy that we feed into when we are sinning. It's a lie. It's a lie. A whole lie. Listen, let's look at Adam and Eve, for example. Okay, the tainted fruit that Adam and Eve were dealing with was selfish ambition. Uh-huh. It caused them to disobey God. They wanted to be like God. They wanted to have the understanding and knowledge of God. So they allowed their uh, judgment to be um, clouded by the voice of the enemy, by the deception of the enemy. What happened? They listened to the voice of another. 
and it caused them to disobey. And they forgot all about what God had even instructed them to do. And so what happened after they ate the fruit, right? They become enlightened, oh, right? Now their mind is open. They have the knowledge of God. They have this great understanding. They realize that they sinned. And what did they go do? They ran and hide. They clothed themselves and ran and, and, ran and hid. Now look, God went after them to search for them, right? You guys remember the story? He searched for them, but they were hiding. So God didn't pull back from them, but they pulled back from God. God still pursued them. But because of their state, they ran and hid from God. It affected their intimacy with their God. It affected their relationship with their creator. And oftentimes, this is us. Is it not? If we're honest, this is us. Because of guilt, shame, and condemnation, we pull back because we think that God, maybe he puts limits on forgiveness like we do with everybody else. Because... I only got a threshold to forgive somebody 10 times. This is my ten, nine and a half times of need of forgiveness. So maybe God, I don't know. So I'm just going to keep pulling back. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. And so what happens? We pull back from God. Meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is trying to draw us back to the Father, but because of sin, we can't hear him drawing us back or we're ignoring him. And now because we don't, we're not walking with the Holy Spirit, we're left with tainted fruit. We can no longer produce good fruit. Is that not accurate? So what we have to do is we have to keep in mind that um, if we want our relationship to, with God to continue to grow, to continue to thrive because it's, we're constantly growing in Christ, we're constantly growing in God, right? If we want that to thrive, we have to lock into the power of the Holy Spirit who keeps drawing us to God. It's the power of the Holy Spirit who even gives us the will to want to live as unto righteousness. It's the Holy Spirit. We absolutely need him. Every single day, if you think you don't, I wish you would keep on living your life the way that you live and see how that works out for you in the end. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us from sinning, right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to walk in alignment with Christ and be more like Christ. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's time out for us to only stop acknowledging just God the Father who created and then God the Son who saves and while we're ignoring God the Holy Spirit who is walking with us every single day. Who is talking to you every single day? It is the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus left us with him. There'd be no purpose for him if he didn't leave him. Huh? If I leave you with something, if I leave you with this tool, if I leave you with this thing that's going to help you, if I leave you with a guide and a person that's going to constantly teach you, constantly walk things out with you, constantly show you the way, why on earth would we ignore that person? We need the Holy Spirit. Say, tainted fruit affects my relationship with God. And here's the thing, it doesn't have to. It, it doesn't have to. We, we've been talking about how tainted fruit affects you, how it affects other people, and how it affects your relationship with God. But the truth is that there's help. Thank God for sending help. Because I can remember when I, didn't, I thought there was no help. You remember the time when you thought there was no help. Point number four, your connection for producing good fruit matters. Let me share some wisdom with you about fruit in the natural. Fruit is the result of a healthy plant producing what it was designed to produce. And we see this in Genesis 1, verses 11 and 12, and, it's, and God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is in which is their seed each according to its kind on the earth and it was so the earth brought forth vegetation plants yielding seed according to their own kinds and trees bearing fruit in which in which is their seed each according to its kind and God said that it was good and and we see the word fruit a lot in the bible 
to describe a person's outward action. Because see, when it comes to our spiritual walk, the rule still applies. Our good fruit is the result of a healthy connection to the Holy Spirit. Because that's where the good fruit is produced from. Our main scripture, verses 22 and 23, gives us a starting place. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See, the more we connect with and allow the Holy Spirit to free reign in our lives, the more fruit is relevant. Now, let me ask you a question, and I want you to think more so you're going to ask this of yourself. Does my connection to the Holy Spirit allow him free reign? And before you answer it, I want, to, I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to look back at your day. I want you to look back at your morning, your week, your month. Look back at your year. Look back at your life. And let me answer that question with a few questions. Have you had a moment where you could have shown more love? Did you have a moment where you could have had more joy? Has there been a situation in your life you needed more peace? Do you have an instance where you needed more patience? Let that sit for a minute. Patience. Had more kindness for someone. Exhibited more goodness. Shown more faithfulness. Or can you recall a time when you needed more self-control? Because see, the truth of the matter is, the answer to the original question does, the connect, does my connection to the Holy Spirit allow him free reign? The answer is no. We don't show enough love. Our joy comes up short. We don't always have peace. We're not even going to touch in the patience. We could sit here all day and talk about patience. We aren't kind to everyone. Our faithfulness does waver sometimes. Our self-control does lack. I, I love the title of this series, Power Surge. Because we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and we read in Acts how the disciples received the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound, like the blowing of a violent wind, came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of, the, of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. That's the power search. But let me ask you this, what happens after the search? Because see, last week was a search. What happens after the search? There has to be a constant connection. And we mentioned it in pre-show when we talked about plugging in, but here's something if you don't know. When you plug in a lamp to power, when does the power stop running to the lamp? As long as you leave it plugged in, it never stops. Even if you turn the lamp off, power is still running through. Power is still running through. What are you connected to? Are you connected to anxiety? Because it'll just keep running through. Are you connected to fear? Because it'll keep running through. Are you connected to the Holy Spirit? Because it'll keep running through until you unplug it. That's when the power gets cut from the lamp is when you unplug it. So again, what are you connected to? Because if we stay connected to the Holy Spirit, good fruit prevails. Com committed connection leads to a constant production of fruit. One translation of our scripture says producing. It's not just I get the fruit one time and I'm good and I roll out. It's a constant production of fruit. John 15, 4, 5 said, this is Jesus speaking. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. 
I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, apart from the connection, you can do nothing. What does committed connection look like for you? For some people, it's going to be a daily connection, a daily surrender, daily communication, and daily repentance. And for some people, it's going to have to be by the minute, by the hour, constantly. Because that's what constant connections look like. Can you be committed to the connection? And as we close, you, you might be sitting here and say, you know what, Pastor Nick, Pastor Angela, I hear you. But if I'm honest, I, I, I don't know what any of that, I, I, I can't do it. I've lived way too long in my mess to even see what you're talking about. I want to tell you, if you're sitting here or you're watching online or it's on replay, it's not too late. The fact that you're sitting here listening to this means, tells me that it's not too late for you. Because the first step is to repent. And that's a fancy church word. And all it means is to turn away. You have to turn away from the mess. You have to turn away from the anxiety. Turn away from the fear. Turn away from the sin. Turn away from the flesh. And when you turn away, you have to turn to something else. You have to turn to Jesus. Because the Acts 4.12 says this, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Because see, to turn away is faith. That's a faith move. Because for some people, you've known that mess no longer than you know Jesus. So when the mess gets comfortable, it's hard to turn away. So you have to make that, it's a turn of faith. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, turning away from your mess means nothing unless you turn to Jesus. Because if you, oh, I, I can do it, I just, I just won't do it no more get a little tap on the shoulder. Because remember, your mess knows you. You know your mess, but, but they know you too. Hey, you're not looking at nothing right now. you just you just ignoring me. So come on back. Because that's what you're used to. But Jesus is saying, turn to me. Romans 10, 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So my question today for anybody here or anybody watching online, are you ready to turn from your tainted fruit? Are you ready to turn to the one who produces good fruit? All eyes closed, heads bowed. And if you're saying that's you, I want you to pray this, pray this prayer with me. And if you're watching online, you can join as well. Because at Ignite, at Ignite, we don't pray alone. Because at the end of the day, we're family. And we love you and we care about where you are. Even if this isn't your home, we still care. That's the fruit of the Spirit evident in this church. And I want you to repeat after me. We're all going to join in. If this is you and you want to accept Jesus, dear God, you love us so much, you made a choice. You gave your son Jesus. Now I have a choice. I'm not perfect. I've sinned. I declare and believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus. I believe he gave his life for me. So I can have a relationship with I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord.
that you raised him from the dead. I give my life to you. Amen. I'm telling you right now, if that was you, let us know, let us know, connect with us, because you literally just made the greatest decision in your life. You are made the step. You're not just turning from, you're turning to the one who saves. And we encourage you, get connected. Let us know. We would love for you to stay connected to Ignite Church Tulsa. We want to help you along this journey. We have resources. We have our pastoral staff and the ministry and prayer team ready to connect with you. We have links in the chat. If you're in the house and in the building and you prayed that prayer, find myself or Pastor Angela or one of our other pastors. We want to connect with you. We want to love on you. And we want to give you some more resources to help you in this journey because this is just the start of that connection. Amen. We are so glad you decided to join us today. If you need prayer for anything, we will be available. We encourage you to connect with us online. Again, we have links. If this is your first time here, let us know at the Welcome Center or online. We'd love to connect. If you're thinking about joining the Ignite Church Tulsa, we like it here. It's pretty cool. We like it. Y'all like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to join again, we mentioned new members. We want you to be a part. That's next Sunday at 9.30 a.m., I believe. If you want to do that, 9.15, excuse me. And then again, our Welcome Center, we have our bookstore available right outside in the lobby as well. We want to thank you so much for being with us again today. And I want to just say this uh, benediction over you before we depart today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen. We thank you again so much. Remember, in every season, we're at night strong.